Welcome one and welcome all to the greatest show of them all. It is the NFC East Mixtape Volume 158, I want to say. Uh, you can listen to the show wherever you get your favorite NFC East blog podcast network across the SB Nation universe. You can also watch this show on either, either, whichever one you prefer, the Bleeding Green Nation YouTube channel or the Blogging the Boys YouTube channel. His name is Brandon Lee Gotten from Bleeding Green Nation. My name is RJ Ochoa from Blogging the Boys. BLG, do you say either or either? I've heard it both ways. I didn't ask, have you heard it? I asked how you say it. I think I say it both ways. Data or data? Definitely data, not data. That's not a yeah. real thing. Data is weird. Either or either data. both work. Yeah. Um, um, we're recording late, RJ. Peek behind yeah. the curtain. It's 9.06 Eastern here on the East Coast, April 2nd. Usually record this, I don't know, like what, 1 p.m. Eastern or so, noonish, around there at some point. And but we, later record today. We also, so shout out to Rachel, first of all, for um, agreeing to still produce, even though we are doing this much later. Um, shout out to you for appeasing my schedule. So shout out to everybody that isn't me, basically. Um, right. Everyone, you know, adjusts to me and makes me feel really special and, and perfect and pretty. Um, so thank you all for that. It would be really difficult for there to be NFC East news after we record, but before the episode launches, but nothing is impossible. <laughs> Don't so we'll rule see it about out. That. Also uh, signed last night really late with the Chiefs. Um, we love a good graphic, a good like NFL share graphic. Did you see? Um, I don't know who shared this actually, but um, it was uh, <laughs> it was the Chiefs quarterback room with various Lombardi trophies on them. Did you, do you know what I'm talking about? No, I didn't see that. So it had um, like it had Patrick Mahomes and three Lombardi trophies, and it had a practice. Squad. I don't even know his, remember his name, but a practice squad quarterback on the Chiefs that has been there for the last two years. I had two Lombardi trophies over mm -hmm. him, and it had a, a Lombardi trophy over Carson Wentz in a Rams uniform, which I thought was really weird. I mean, I understand and actually respect using him in a Rams uniform because that's his most recent thing. We actually get really annoyed when people will be like, oh, so-and-so, former Cowboy, signs with or whatever when they haven't played for the Cowboys in like five years. Um, but you can't use the Super Bowl thing if you're showing him as a Ram. You know what I'm saying? That's weird. Even using it, showing him as an Eagle is kind of awkward. Yeah, it, he does have a Super Bowl ring. Uh, the Eagles don't win the Super Bowl that season without him. I think it's fair to say. I think they don't have a Super Bowl season. I don't think it's him. even like fair to say that. Like that implies that you have to reach to say it. It's there's no way they win the Super Bowl without. I I feel like he's never gotten credit for any sort of involvement there. In that well, that's why I'm trying to uh, to say that to preface it. Uh, yeah, interesting. I guess that Carson Wentz, former Eagles and Commanders quarterback, is still around. In the this is AFC. his fifth team? Yeah. Right? Fifth right. team? Eagles, yeah. Colts, Commanders, Rams, and now the Chiefs. As and he's, and he started games for all of them, which is difficult to do in correct. the last... His last Eagles start was 2020? Yes. Is that correct? Yep. Wow. Amazing. Against the... Do you know which team? I think I can figure this out. I believe Jalen Hurts. I believe. Hang on, no, don't say anything. I believe Jalen Hurts' first start was against the Saints. Is that correct? Yes. And so I want to say Carson's last was against the Packers. I can't remember the first start thing now that I think about it, but I guess I'm, that is true. I'm pretty yeah. certain it was. And yes, um, it was the Packers. Is what I was looking for. Yeah, they made the switch in Green Bay at halftime. I'm looking for Hurts' first career start to prove. I it. think you're right. I was just trying it was, to do... It was the Saints, and the Eagles yep. won. And I mm -hmm. believe, I'm checking now, that Taysom Hill started at quarterback. Yes. I think that Saints. was like the third of yeah, three he games he had started or so. He was right. like undefeated at that point, and the Eagles beat him. That was the uh, the COVID year, and that was in the middle of the run the Saints had where they um, they played the Broncos with uh, without a quarterback. So, Yes. Who would have thought um, the Broncos would have regressed from a quarterback standpoint from that day? Hmm. Somehow they found a way. Well, I mean, I think they've had quarterbacks better than Kendall Hinton, with all due respect. But uh, that's also no, I'm, sa saying I'm saying that, I'm all. saying they regressed from Kendall Hinton in in, in the oh, yeah. In but the I'm, Wilson. yeah, I'm saying they've had better. I mean, Russell Wilson's better than Kendall. It was Wilson? a joke. It was it was just a joke. That's all it was. I mean, we could have laughed about it instead of like actually parsing through it. We're all, we're out of rhythm. We're doing this later than expected. Um, I do I do want to get to or I have one last riffraff before we get to the actual show. Well, same. Um, you mentioned the date. It's Tuesday, April second. Have I ever told you the way that, um, like the the time in my life that I tried to pull an April Fool's joke on my parents and it backfired on me? Maybe I don't know. 
So I was in college and and I I thought this would be hilarious. I called my parents and told them that I had been looking into this and applying and whatever to appear on the real world and that I had a, an interview and I was like and I was like I don't even know if this is going to happen but I know I have an interview and if it does you know whatever blah blah <coughs> excuse me and I, <coughs> I did this presuming that they were going to go there's no way you can do this like you can't be on the real world and so that was going to be the April Fools joke and instead they both were all oh my gosh we are so proud of you mm. and it really sucked to then have to be, to be all actually i made the whole thing up uh april fools so yeah that's wow. my story more like the fake world nice uh you are a citizen of the world today uh, yeah with uh, look at this i had 20 tacos rj for 20 or it's a uh, a uh, dollar taco night at Loco Pez in Fishtown, and I got this shirt. For- I was gonna. So you've got a shirt that says "Echo" in Fishtown, so that's yeah. Spanish, obviously. Mm-hmm. Um, and your shirt, your cap, excuse me, says "SD." Yeah, um, that's for a hummus brand. Okay, you can wow. check out my Instagram page to see. No free the, ads, but you know. Hey. I mean, they sent me for, for a bunch of free stuff, so I mean, so it was I'll a give free them a shout out. Not really a free, I guess. It's not really an ad. It's more of just like, uh, you know, a handshake deal, if you will. Uh, all right. It's oh, Tuesday. yeah. Anyway, I uh, $20 uh, taco night. Um, really good. The challenge is, can you eat it in under five minutes? And I'm not like a speed eater guy. I feel like I've been consistent about that. I want to enjoy my food. So I could not do the 20 and under five i did 14 i wouldn't and five. Want to do that, that would, yeah that would i didn't i i like if i really wanted to do it if my life was on the line or something which i don't know why it would be in that situation i think i could do it but i could feel myself being like i don't want to have like a bad night so i'm not going to push it but uh if you do the 20 regardless you get the shirt so boom oh shout nice out to, shout out to local piss well done um okay so it's tuesday april 2nd it is officially nfl draft month today we are going to be taking a look at the needs from a positional standpoint that we uh, see on every team in the division. Welcome to the NFC's mixtape. We cover the whole thing. Also, um, I said to this earlier today on Tuesday, ESPN released or ESPN bet released, I should say, um, their win totals for the year. Our, mm-hmm. our good buddy, Rob Stats Carrera, I don't know if you've ever heard him say this. He used to say this was his favorite day of the year. I don't know that that's true. But... That does sound like something <laughs> he has said, but it also sounds like something you would say, but not necessarily mean. Like you said it, and then it's the words are yeah. out of your mouth, and it's like, well, I didn't really mean that, but I did say it. I've definitely done several podcasts in in several years, several seasons with stats where he has said, "This is my favorite day of the year." But, it's just know, not. It's just not I, true. I know. I, it might again, be one of his favorite. I believe that it might totally. be like a, a top fifteen favorite. Totally, top but 10, the, maybe the idea that this is his favorite was no. um or is ridiculous. But we'll get into um ESPN best. We should ask total. him what his favorite day of the year is. Like, like independent of this conversation, like try to, text, trying to make him forget this. Yeah, just text I'll him text right him, now. I'm texting him right now in our group text. <laughs> um, and uh, we'll no, see no, 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 don't do that because then he's gonna be like, it's it could, he, okay, okay, okay. I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm just, I'm typing the, the, the text like right a bit. So I'm gonna say random question for you. Semicolon. What is your favorite day of the year? <laughs> okay, we'll see what he says. All right. So, so that'd be incredible if we're just so wrong and he says that it's, the, it's today because his win totals came out. Um, right. But th- these are ESPN bets. Um, DraftKings is our sponsor on the ESPN Nation NFL show, but uh, ESPN dropped it today. Anyway, okay, so uh, let we go in divisional order. The Dallas Cowboys won the division last year. Blah blah blah. Uh, who cares? Do you? What do you mean? Who cares? All right. Who cares? Is a fan of a team who used to that? hang. Is a fan of a team who hangs division winning banners. I'm not. I, I'm not doing that. I'm saying who cares. I'm anyway, taking ownership on my end. So, I wrote about this. Uh, we actually haven't dropped it yet at BTB. Hmm. The Cowboys need too many things. Like they don't have enough draft picks. Like enough of a volume of draft picks. At least serious hmm. draft picks. Like from an actual quantitative standpoint, they do, I suppose. But their top 100 picks. They do not have enough. They, they've got it. Some of this, all of this really depends on how they evaluate Tyler Smith, whether he is going to be their left tackle or their left guard. Obviously, if they view him as a tackle, then they don't have a need there and vice versa. But they do have a need at one of them. Obviously, a need at left guard isn't as pressing or isn't as alarm inducing as left tackle. Um, they have a need at center because Brock Hoffman is a human being, but 
not one that I really want to trust, obviously, in a year of critical importance. So center is a need, uh, which, spoiler alert, is kind of, if I have to lean a certain way in the draft right now, it's Jackson Paris Johnson. But linebacker is a need. Now, the Cowboys, of all positions, have placed a band-aid piece of duct tape so to speak on that spot by signing eric hendricks he remains their only external free agent signing at the time of this recording and it once again it is tuesday <laughs> it's April almost a 2nd. month um stats has an answer by the way he said my birthday <laughs> so um that's a very stats answer as well um cowboys also have a need at running back um i don't find this to be a massive need i i'm you know i'm hmm. there's a lot of people who and, and some of this, and, and you've talked about this, the um, like regional bias, want to see them draft Jonathan Brooks, um, which I think would be foolhardy, especially given the fact that he's coming off the injury. But I digress. A lot of people, by the way, thought in 2015 when DeMarco left that, oh, man, Dallas is definitely going to draft Duke Johnson or mm. Tevin Coleman, or they're definitely going to get one of these guys. And they didn't. Um, they just trusted Joseph Randall and, and Darren McFadden and Kristen Michael. So I, I think we could. And I don't know if you've seen this or not, but um, the Zeke thing that you know we've thrown out as of course as a, i saw a, that what do you mean did i see that well yeah. i mean it was such an it was such an it's obvious so joke that was such an obvious like potential reality that it's just hard to accept but whatever um it's so those so are gonna main, happen it's so it's so gonna happen i would offer this last one as a need and then i'm anxious for your thoughts on everything and this i did write about and it's out at least at the time of this recording i my position is that the cowboys should should sign Dak prescott to an extension i think that's pretty obvious around here mm -hmm. however if you're not going to, mm. you have to draft a quarterback. You have wow. to. Well, no, I mean, again, I'm, I'm against this, but, you know, if that's the, the boat you want to live in, they, they do not have a quarterback under contract for next year. Cooper Rush is, is on, an, on the last year of his deal. Trey Lance, unless they pick up his fifth-year option at 22, 24 million. Yeah, they, there's just no way they're going to do that. So even if you are committed to some sort of rebuild or whatever, you have to have somebody on your roster or else mm. you – put yourself at risk of even if it's with Trey Lance in negotiations in the offseason giving that person all of the leverage it won't mm -hmm. be you know to the same degree that Dak Prescott holds it obviously given everything but you're literally going to then put yourself in the exact same situation where the person you're negotiating with knows that you need them more than anything else I'm not actually saying that drafting a quarterback provides some sort of leverage against Dak Prescott but it does in a literal sense it at the very least gives you some sort of mild ammunition the most mild ammunition but uh, an actual non-zero level nonetheless to go to Dak and say we have a plan if you leave and they can't do that right now so again if you've committed to moving on from Dak then a quarterback is on this list for me that would not be my choice though your thoughts yeah I mean I think that's a really sobering thought by you I mean jokes aside trolling aside I think it you know, I think about what the Eagles did with Carson Wentz, and it's not the same situation here, but just, you know, the general philosophy of being the quarterback factory. Uh, I think this kind of fits in that, and I think generally that is a worthwhile thing to do. It's not even just about, you know, the leverage of it all. It's also like, what if what if Dak doesn't want to play for the Cowboys? What if he decides, and I'm not saying that's the most realistic thing. I'm not saying that like, he hates the Cowboys, but sometimes in sports, relationships sour. And like we saw that with Kirk Cousins in Washington, sometimes there are circumstances or maybe Dak feels like, hey, it's two times now where it came up to the end of my contract where, you know, we couldn't get this done early. So maybe he's worried about like that third potential payday. Also, maybe the season goes awry. A bunch of different things can happen. The point is, like, the Cowboys have to prepare for even the slight possibility of he might not want to come back. Even if we can give him the best offer, maybe he wants to go some play somewhere else, especially if the Cowboys keep flaming out like they usually do. So. Uh, I absolutely think as well that uh, ben, depending on how the board shakes out and obviously a lot can change uh, and from what we expect right now on April 2nd till the end of this month. But let's say, you know, Michael Penix is sitting there at where the Cowboys pick 25, 24, 24 or, or like right around there. Maybe they can trade up a little bit. Point being like, what if there's a quarterback on the board there and the Cowboys are like, you know what? Um, and certainly, uh, wait, McCarthy was not still in Green Bay when Jordan Love was drafted, right? Correct. That he that was his second year gone. He, okay. he, that was the 2020 draft, and his he was fired midway through 18. But he was was he there when Aaron Rodgers got drafted? 
No. He, okay. he was in San Francisco when they drafted Alex Smith over Aaron Rodgers. The Niners, but obviously. The point I'm trying to make is I guess he's been around like an organization, you know, that even though if he wasn't directly implemented. He, he did manage the, the Favre Rodgers thing at sure. the very least. Right. Even though he point. wasn't there, he did manage it. Right? My point is like he's had that dynamic before, or at least and he's worked for an organization that thinks that way. So I don't think it's like this totally foreign concept that he might not be totally uh, unprepared to deal with. So, yeah, I mean, again, I know it's not the most ideal situation for you in terms of what you would want to do ideally, but if you're looking at what's most realistic coming out of what you think is expecting to happen with him not being getting an extension, then yeah, that has to be on the table. Again, I mean, I don't know how to quantify the leverage that Dak has. I mean, in the article, I put it at 99.9%. And if they don't take a quarterback with, a premium pick then then it goes to 100 percent because then you actually like right now you kind of have that that incredibly loose threat right like i don't know man if you know if this happens and this quarterback falls you know we could take them and it would be so stupid you know people have thrown out like t- spending you know the second round pick 56 overall on Penix or, or bo Nix or whatever and it's like okay well now we're still doing this improperly because now you don't have the fifth year option and that's not the like you know, end of the world. I mean, Jalen Hurts was a second round pick, right? Like, so like it can happen, but I mean, for once it would be nice to see them do things at the very least on paper, the conventional way, whatever. Well, but I mean, I don't, I don't want to act like quarterback is the most pressing lead. The, the whole, I would say the conviction too, is part of that. You know sure, what I mean? Like you want to draft him because you really believe in this guy, right, not just right. like because to do it, but back to what at the very least are primary needs right now, because this, that is a hypothetical at the very least. Um, it does depend on what they want to do with Tyler Smith center for me. I mean, we had a great article that OCC wrote at, uh, at BTB kind of evaluating 40 different mock drafts and where people have the Cowboys going and what direction, et cetera, et cetera. And my favorite world right now, not my favorite player for them to pick is Jackson Powers Johnson, because I would, I would much rather walk away with the best center in the draft, a plug and play day one dude who, you know, you can rely on. And I'm not saying that I'm against, you know, Tyler Guyton or you know whoever that ulti- like pick the tackle that is the fourth or fifth or sixth dude off the board but I don't I just I would rather be ahead of the curve on something and and live to kind of find another day elsewhere plus the tackle class is is deep you could mm-hmm. address that position later on anyway so um I don't know if Jackson Paris Johnson will fall to them but that's like it, you know how draft season is we kind of have movements where we you know one month you feel this way or one week you feel that way and then something happens and it can kind of change within you and sometimes it works out perfectly like you and Devonte smith um but right now all my eggs are in the jackson powers johnson basket as it relates to the cowboys i think that's reasonable i think offensive line makes the most sense i always think about you know what's the common theme with some of these very best you know dallas cowboys seasons over the past so many years in contrast to the ones that weren't really good, obviously, you know, quarterback injury is a factor, but the offensive line um, being up to snuff has been a really big deal for them. So, and, you know, you lose Tyron Smith. I know Tyler Biotis wasn't anything special, but he, there's certainly room to go down, especially with no clear replacement behind him. So, and Zach Martin's getting up there. I mean, he's, he's probably one of the oldest players in the NFL, right? Active. He is, um, well, I mean, the class of 2014 in general, but to that point, Aaron Donald just retired and he's a member of that class. And Mike Evans is there and Odell is yep, there, right? Like, exactly. I mean, all those dudes so, are kind of, you know, Aaron Rodgers is speaking of, is kind of carrying the mantle for oldest dude in the NFL, but he is now the longest tenured player on the Cowboys with Tyron yep. gone to actually join up with Aaron Rodgers. So, um, so yeah, I mean, I feel like they'll probably kick Tyler to left tackle just because it makes the most sense. And if they do, then I don't need you to worry about a guard, you know, right away. Then you really have to go Jackson Paris Johnson. But if 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 they don't address offensive line, you know, we found out today. I'm, I'm sure you guys have a 30 visits tracker going on as well at BGN that Byron Murphy is one of their 30 visits. I would not love so confusing that it's a name of a, a player in the NFL. All right, right. Who was only uh, drafted a few years ago. Well, that's the Cowboys said that going on with Connor McGovern, who was mm, an offensive that's lineman. That's true. Yeah, I never was, know. Who is it, who? Oh, that. it was very, so very confusing. It was very weird um, in course looking for photos. Um, sometimes it was a tough situation. But anyway, um, I would he's an incredible player and I would love it from that perspective. And I'm not even against the idea, but I feel like you almost can't do that because you almost kind of have to rely on the Mozzie Smith thing working out. Like, And mm. if they don't address what would be like a true and utter disaster for That's me. Some is cost fallacy, my man. I know it is, but again, they've put they've painted us into a corner here with like not addressing the roster at all in free agency. So 
I mean, I only have so many lemons to make lemonade with here. And so I'm doing my absolute best. Hmm. But that being said, if they don't address the offensive line in whatever fashion that is with their first round pick, and if they take Jonathan Brooks in the second round, that is the most that is like the worst possible thing for me hmm. i know we'll do um an episode that is like yeah, things, we, things we don't want to see but I'm, well, I'm talking about the cowboys here like that that's my opinion if if the cowboys do not address the offensive line and then draft their running back now you're putting and if it's jonathan brooks a running back coming off of an injury behind an offensive line that has no help and is in some hmm. dire straits as is i mean this, this is saquon in new york to a lesser degree, because Saquon was like the most talented person you could put in that situation, yep. and he failed, um, relatively speaking, of course. So um, that's where I'm at. Jackson Powers Johnson, no matter what. Okay. I mean, um, that's not always the most exciting, but it is like eating your vegetables. You have to do it. Last thing um, I mentioned, we would do the win totals. ESPN bet has the Cowboys at 10 and a half for 2024. And they won how many last year? They've won 12 every year in a row for three years. And they've gone over the projected win total every year for three years in a row. Hmm. I'd take the over on nine and a half. I want to see their schedule. I haven't seen their schedule. You know, I I mean, I got to look at their opponents. I got to double check that. AFC North and NFC South. Because that's always a big one. And then you get the the first place schedule. So And the schedule order matters too. But yeah. Well, I mean, nobody has that. But so the first place-ness of it all is the Lions, the Bucks. And mm. the Texans. Um, that's their three games for winning the division last year. Uh, I'm going to say under just from a standpoint of I think that there's disaster potential here. You know, McCarthy in his last year, um, Dak potentially lame duck. Uh, Dak is not going to be as good as he was last year. And that is the same that's coming from me who said he was definitely going to be better than he was obviously in 2022. I think the is year next year is going to be between the two kind of more extremes, I would say, of 2023, where he was in the MVP conversation until late. And then obviously the low of leading the league in interceptions in 2022. So I think you kind of, you know, you kind of wait, like wasted one of his best years there. And even if he's good, I think he's going to be a little bit of a step down at least. And then the fact that it's a division where no one repeats and no one just rules over the division so easily. So I would, it's tough. It's a good number. It's 10 and a half, right? Yes. Yeah, I think they could get to 10. I think they'll be around 10, but I'm going to lean under on that. I'm pretty much with you, except I'm going to lean over. I'm going to get worse. I, I'm not denying that, but I mean, they've hit the over three years in a row. And that, that isn't, you can't just bank off of that. Um, I'm really mad at them. I want to be very clear about that, but I I would rather be wrong this way. Um, and the fact that they've proven, because I've taken the under a lot of times, but I would have set the number at nine and a half because I would take the over on that because I think 10 is, is right. There. And again, that's I why like getting the 10. Yeah, yeah like the 10 that, a lot. that's why they're very good at this. But I'll, I'll take the over and assume they just, but I mean, to the main point, Washington's better. New York's better. Like some of those wins that they've piled up to help get to 12 each of the last two years are, are going to be a lot more difficult to come by. But I'll still lean this direction for now. Um, by the way, for the purposes of this discussion, I pulled up the depth chart survey team on our lads. And you know how they have um, they have uh, some names shaded in aqua that are um, that are free agent additions. Sure. It's just it's so sad to look at the Cowboys step chart because there's it's just Eric Hendricks who, whose name is in aqua. Uh, but okay, let's move on to the Philadelphia Eagles. Do you want to list their team names or, or or do you want my guess on what they are? We should talk about the Hassan Reddick thing a little bit. Um, now, how he's because, on a better team that wears green, the real gang green. Uh, he was traded for a th- third round pick. In 2026, not even 2024, 2025, 2026, that can become a second round pick if two qualifications to qualifiers happen. And I think that's playing over 67.5% of the Jets' defensive snaps and double digit sacks. So I want to congratulate a- you because nobody loves a picks tracker throughout the regular season that's like right. my man BLG. Uh, oh, so so you- that's easy. That's what I'm saying. You've had these every year in a row for I don't know how long, and you have a new one. And it, it's got some it's – some. It, it's more than just like their team record, so it at least challenges your brain. Mm, yeah, really, you know, inspires you to check in every week too, as opposed to, you know, just you see the standings, you already know. It's like, oh, wait, did he actually play? Mm-hmm. Did he check the snap count? Yeah, so, uh, you know, I don't think that's good enough. I think Hassan Reddick uh, is obviously a great player, and he is the fourth most sacks in the league ever since 2020. Just stat I say a lot, but like it's just I think you're overthinking it if you're like, well, actually, he's run defense, and I hate that. I hate that that's become a thing so much because first of all, I don't even think it's that bad. Second of all, who cares? It's run defense. You're telling me like the guy who gets a ton of sacks can't defend the run? Like, 
chill out a little bit. And also his replacement, Bryce Huff, wasn't even put on the field for rundowns. It's very much like a bugaboo with him and is not proven. So like, how is that the answer that uh, the real guy replacing him is even worse at defending the run than Hassan Redick is. So uh, I don't like that. I think the Eagles just kind of went into this thinking there's no way he'll be back. So um, they just tried to make the most of it, which I guess if that was a circumstance, it could have been worse. I don't think it's an F minus in that sense, but my, objection to that would be it never had to be you're just like definitely moving on from him i think they should have played hardball i think they did it with zach Ertz in the past who had way more you know cachet with the team and the organization uh game winning touchdown super bowl catcher zach Uh, was not really a touchdown i mean it was it it was unequivocally a touchdown it was very very questionable so it's not it's really not i mean it was a touchdown in two ways so i'm gonna get into it now that you said it number one (laughs) clearly takes three steps before he Mm -hmm. at least he also loses maybe four okay so he had three before that so he became a runner before Mm. he broke the plane Um, number two the ball never hit the ground it yeah, but hit. he lost control. Yeah, but he then caught it when he rolled on his back. It, he has it in his hands. Mickey Mouse he reaches title. onto the goal line. It bounces up into the air. It doesn't hit the ground only. He lost possession of it, but it didn't hit the ground, so it's not incomplete mm-hmm. at that point. And then it rolls on his back, and he catches it there. So that's still a touchdown, even not if you're real, saying the feet thing doesn't real matter. Title. Brady Rob. Watch it. Wow. Anyway. Uh, wow. Excuses. Tough. <laughs> so, uh, yeah. Anyway, I think Hassan Reddick, I mean, the Eagles are a worse team. They traded a player who was elite at a premium position, and they got something that might not even help them for the next two seasons. So they're a worse team, uh, and I don't love that move. Um, so now to parlay that into our current conversation, uh, and I guess give me any thoughts on Reddick if you want. I don't think Ed Rusher is suddenly the Eagles' biggest need. They obviously did sign Bryce Huff. They are bringing back Josh Sweat, Nolan Smith. They took in the first round last year. They're obviously going to be hoping he can take a jump. Brandon Graham is still here. Um, that's not like stacked. But it's also not like, oh, we have to take a player in the first round now because we traded Hassan Reddick. Uh, So what's your thought on him being out of the division? I don't have a thought on him being out of the division. I never feared him in the way that you needed me to. Um, So I I needed you to. Whatever. Um, I will say this this does feel like one that Howie did get a little cute with because while I, you know, didn't drink the same level of Kool Aid. I, I I find Hassan Rick to be a very good player, to be very clear. But um, you know, didn't drink it's the Kool Aid. It's not to, even to... like a debate. No, but, it's just but, objectively but, true. But my point is, if if we had rewound, the, if we like, if we went back in time and told ourselves a year ago, like, oh, he's going to go for a third round pick in twenty twenty six, that may become a second. Like that would feel so incredibly low for the production that that yeah. you got from him. And so it it just it feels like. I don't know. I mean, and there's a whole I'm lot all- of cope going on within Eagles fandom about this trade. And that's kind of what's annoying me. Well, like you said, oh, his run defense is bad. Oh, he's getting older. Blah, blah, blah. There's, oh, he, he was not great at the end of last it's season. Interesting Who was? How, it's interesting how run defense matters all of a sudden because Demarcus Thorns has elite at it and nobody really cares about that. I'm saying I don't care about it. That's what well, I'm saying. Though. No, but I'm, I'm saying, saying there. I'm, I'm not necessarily saying you're I mean, a hypocrite, I don't but there's definitely a hypocrite it. out there who's, but, you like, know. I, just stop. If that's the biggest issue with a guy who is fourth most sacks in the NFL, I, like, okay, fine. I'll sign up for that. Anyone will sign up for that. It's just lame. It's pathetic. No way at the end of the season was anyone like, you know what we need to do to fix this defense or get headed in the right direction? We need to trade to Sonrad. No one was saying that. Absolutely not. And there's a lot of revisionist history and people trying to cope and make sense of it. I just think it's not a good move. It's a bad move. And this kind of is like the opposite, or this is what we talked about with the Saquon thing a little bit, where like sometimes Eagles get the benefit of the doubt somewhat deservingly. Uh, when it comes to moves like that. Uh, but like in this case, I think they're still getting that, and I don't think they deserve it in this t- this time around. Mm, like they might with Saquon, you're saying. Like the jury's still I out for you on that. There's more logic to that than there is to this trade. Um, I don't have a Hassan Reddick take, um, but I do have an Eagles just thing to share before we get to the draft. Eagles thing or... to share. So this is hard for me to admit, but the mixtape is a place of honesty. So, which is why I, I thought about it and I'm, I'm willing mm. to share this. Have you been keeping tabs on the final four at all? Are you like, or the, the tournament at all? Like, have you, uh, which one either? Well, oh, this, in this case, the men's, but either, yeah, I did I watch the LSU Iowa game last night. At least the second half it was pretty cool. Obviously, right. Caitlin Clark's right. pretty great. So for the purposes of, of what we're talking about here, I'm referencing the men's tournament and UConn, who's been on an absolute tear um, and their coach, Danny Hurley, 
kind of rubs people the wrong way. I don't know if mm. you're aware of this. Like, you're an East Coast guy, so I mean, you know, I don't know if you know what what the conversation is in, in that neck what? of the woods. Uh, but he, uh, well, you're yeah, you're an East Coast guy. I mean, it's all the same. But anyway, um, <laughs> so he has a a bravado about him that I find to be funny and I find mm. to be interesting, but does annoy people. And I thought about this, and and you know, kind of to myself, and I thought, damn it, he's Nick Sirianni. That's mm. who he is. Like he's the Nick Sirianni of college basketball, and I kind of like it a lot. Um, so respect. Interesting. And I long said, I, and I think you'll agree, back me up on this, that when you're winning, you can do whatever you want. The you know, as as long as you yeah. continue to win, you can be as obnoxious as you want. And Nick damn near pulled it off to the point that he would have had bragging rights for eternity on it. Mm. Um, but you don't, or he didn't. And as a result, when you put that target on your back, people come for you hard. Sure. Um, and so it was just an interesting experience for me watching Danny Hurley and thinking about Nick Sirianni. I can't all. comment on that at all because I don't know. But uh, the Eagles' two biggest needs, I would say, <clears throat> number one, a lot of people will think like short term, immediate need. Look at the depth chart right now, have to play game today, cornerback, because they have Darius Slay, who I, we don't need to relitigate here, <laughs> but he is certainly locked in as a above average starter for sure. And then on the other side, shrug because james bradbury is still on the roster currently that's a surprise a lot of people thought they would designate him as a post june one cut they could still actually just cut him after june one if they want and the advantage of doing it at that point or why they would do it at that point and not do it now is that they have some otas and a mini camp coming up they can kind of get a look at him and those practices see like okay is he truly kind of just cooked doesn't have anything left and should we just definitely move on uh or you know maybe they see something they like i'm not saying you make that decision just based on that but it kind of gives you a little bit more information and also kind of depending on else uh, what you do in the draft and whatnot keely ringo for the eagles traded up before in last draft uh, i believe i think their third this year to move up into the four uh last year to get him early in the fourth round and he showed some promise down the stretch one of the few players who late in the season actually was kind of like interesting a little bit uh, had some struggles too. Um, so kind of not just a certain starter there on the outside. And then a lot of mock drafts have the Eagles taking like Cooper DeGean or uh, name your cornerback here. Mm -hmm. There's a bunch of them in that range where they might take them. But I don't think those are going to do that. I think that's what kind of like is the more of the instant gratification, what people want. Unless, you know, there's a big run on offensive tackles, but I think they're going to take an offensive tackle. I think that's what they want to do. It's what they have done in terms of Landon Dickerson, Jason Kelsey, or uh, Cam Jurgens. You know, these it's different position, but Andre Dillard, they drafted him obviously when they still had um, Jason Peters. Jason Peters. So um, <clears throat> I think that's what they're going to do. And I, I, in a perfect world, you want your first round pick to be playing for you. So it's not like great if they're on the bench. I think, and my, my friend Jimmy Kemsky, who I host the BGN radio our with here on He's our friend. the Bleeding Your Nation podcast. Uh, you know, the way he framed it, and I think this kind of makes sense, or at least is a good way to defend it, is if your first round pick isn't playing, that's a good thing from the standpoint of both Jordan Mailata and Lane Johnson are healthy, and certainly, you know, you like that in a, a given season. So perfect situation, though, would be you take your first round offensive tackle, he can play right guard for you, so you move Cam Jurgens over to right guard to center, and he can kind of play there for a little bit, a year or two, and then eventually either take over, well, probably take over for Lane Johnson in the future would be the hope. So I had tackle as, as you know, the position that made the most sense to me. I also had linebacker. I don't know if you agree with that. Um, it is. It's, it's just not, you know, where the value lines up. In right, the right, right. Um, I mean, but for the purposes of just team needs. Mm -hmm. um, but so I view the Cowboys and Eagles in a similar way in that they're both trying to evolve the plane while it's flying, like while they're oh, in the air okay. already. Uh, you know, like they're trying to enhance the plane, you know, they're, they're mm. trying to like, you know, apply modifications to the plane. You know what I mean? Like they're trying to install new things on the plane, but they're in the air, you know, they're mid flight. And that's a really difficult thing to do. Now, I think the difference between Philadelphia and Dallas is Philadelphia went up into the air with the materials on board. Right. So like they're, they're already kind of ready because do they have a needed linebacker? Yes. Mm -hmm. Did they make a move at the position? Yes. I, I mean, I know that people think what they do about Devin White, but at the very least, again, he's a material on the plane in this particular analogy. The Cowboys don't have materials on the plane as it relates to offensive line or whatever. Again, I, we don't, this is about the Eagles here. Mm -hmm. um, so in that sense, I mean, 
it's not ideal, obviously, to, to you know you think your first round pick is supposed to be a plug and play day one starter, but the Eagles yeah. have a very talented roster, and so that's just kind of where they're at, and that's not a weird thing. Like what a what a horrible quality of theirs. They don't have an obvious hole that they have to address with the first round draft pick. But um it bums and me also, out to, to hear I was just gonna say to hear the tackle could be in play because that wipes another one off the board for the Cowboys. Right. But it and, does uh, push Jackson Powers Johnson down potentially. Sure. Uh, although I think I think he could conceivably be in the mix as well. I don't. I think lesser likely, but because I think they want to tackle more than a guard center kind of guy. But uh, yeah, I think the value just also is going to line up with that in this year's draft class. I think there's going to be some really again barring some kind of like you know huge run on them in the late teens or whatever. Although Howie could always move up for one. Uh, I definitely think that's in the mix there. And kind of talking about how tying in the Reddick thing to this. Again, they traded for a pick in 2026. That's so far away, or at least it feels it right now. Why wouldn't if so? You're thinking just I'm talking about likelihood here. Why wouldn't that same team maybe take a, a first round pick who might not even help the team this year? They're clearly point being they're clearly not just like the Jets who Redick was traded to, who are like we're all in on this year. You know, really focusing this year, making a chips all in push, which is a little weird. And, and our good friend John Stolness, our good friend John Stolness put on a uh, bleeding green nation today an article about how the Eagles are kind of sending mixed messages and i kind of agree with that a bit because when I mean, you have sirianni here and what feels like kind of this like really pivotal year and yeah he that's the that's the equiv- uh, definitely an equivalent to the cowboy situation like sirianni is to mccarthy totally he's not in a contract year but like whatever like that's head coaching money there's no salary cap it's fake well, it doesn't matter as um, much. But, but to that point unlike the Cow- the cowboys have shown a willingness to take their coach contracts to the final year they haven't fired yeah. a head coach in a long time whereas the eagles have fired a head coach you know it, like multiple times like they're not afraid to do that to your point yeah they don't teams don't want to do it obviously right. because it's not ideal to be paying someone that's not working for you but yeah that's not if if the team stinks jeffrey Lurie's not going to be worried that oh no we have to keep him because of his contract so but it's just weird because I mean, if I mean, think about that trade, by the way, too, from Sirianni's perspective. Think about like, okay, so we're trading Hassan Reddick away, like our best pass rusher, and okay, we got Bryce Huff. That's great. But I the thing I tweeted out, one part of my reaction to the trade. If you didn't see it, if you're not on Twitter, if you're not following me, I don't know if you saw it specifically either. Was like, you know, Hassan Reddick is the boat, and uh Bryce Huff is the mystery box like from Family Guy right, it's right. like it could be like, anything <laughs> they, they want a boat it's like just take the boat and again yeah, yeah. it could be anything it could be it could even be a boat uh so I kind of feel like that's the situation there but yeah so if you're Sirianni just like imagine that imagine and it, I'm not saying to be clear they should make moves in mind only for the best of Sirianni but the reality is like you know he has feelings too and i'm sure he's seeing that and kind of I, I wonder where he's at on that the best of sirianni is the best for every eagles fan like whether an eagles fan likes him or not because this we talk about this all the time how it's weird how nfl teams almost bank on the worst possible thing happening so they can like win the deal right like i mean i don't mean to make it about the cowboys but like well okay yeah, oh, i think nfl teams is a little bit more no 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 but like the cowboys so like what would like the Cowboys would quote unquote win their their negotiation with Dak Prescott if they had to pay him less, right? Okay, well, how would that happen? He would be really bad, and right. th- and therefore you would be really bad. But if he plays really well and he wins the deal, that means that you lose the deal, right? Like, and and the same point is true in this instance for Sirianni, right? Like, if if he does really well, well then everybody wins, like everybody gets what they want. And if he does really poorly, then nobody gets what they want. So like the success that everybody cares about is tied directly to his, sort of. you know, motive. I mean, you get the point. Um, yeah. Unless you just think he's already kind of just DOA and you feel like you have, they have to move on, but yeah, I, I'm ready to move on from the Eagles, but I have one last Philly thing. If you're okay, moving on from the, Eagles. Mm. I'm listening. Are you okay? Moving on from the Eagles though? Like, are, I guess, is that, cause this is the last thing I want to talk about. Are you excited break. that Joel Embiid is back? Uh, oh, shout out to Skechers. Anyway, um, not a free, uh, yeah, I guess that was a free ad, but no free ads. It really here. was. Anyway, you brought up John Stolness. I saw that he passionately made the argument that mm. it was okay that the Phillies hung a banner, noting that they were a playoff team last yeah, year. Yeah, I don't agree with that. Okay, because <laughs> you were against division banners early on, um, but Stolness said it was okay to commemorate. And that's, uh, hanging it for no. last year... I still am against this, but if if they'd hung, I don't know if they have one for 2022, but like for winning the National League, that's a real thing, right? Like, yeah, like that, that, that is, also is steeped a, in tradition, right? Right, like the, like like the lore of baseball. That's mm-hmm. a real thing to so yeah. hang a, a pennant, right? 
but to like hang a just like oh we lost the nlcs to the diamondbacks like that's a weird thing to do in my mind. yeah i especially how they lost you know they were up what 2-0 and everything like yeah it's just it doesn't really make sense to me i'm not going to defend that i definitely don't but like the vibes at the bank baby watch and out. also it kind of matches up to and shout out to our listener debbie rush who always comments that she hates the baseball talk that we have on here <laughs> um that at least on the bleeding reading, bleeding your nation side uh the energy too yeah last year when they did like the ring ceremony for winning the nl it's like the, the energy is wrong for that it's just they kind of want to and i get it like you're a billionaire owner you know you he's the phillies payroll is huge right so you want like you want that moment of gratification as the owner who's spending all this money but it's not real though it's like it's fake you're you're, you're I, faking it i saw the diamondbacks you know celebrating obviously they lost the world series but it's like if you want to give them rings okay fine in a private ceremony okay whatever yeah that's fine for them i'm not saying they shouldn't have them they shouldn't it's it's weird from a fan perspective but like so the eagles got nfc championship rings right like from two years ago as well but i don't recall there being like a ceremony for that like it makes sense that everybody kind of wants that to happen in private because yes you obviously lost the most important game right the most important series but to have like a ceremony you know like that's how the diamondbacks did it and I'm happy for them, but again, it's just it's a little weird. I, it's a it's a weird, and I understand the tradition of like penance and whatnot, but whatever. I'm ready yeah. to move on. Are you? All right, let's well, we take a break. So let's take, take a break right now, and then we'll be back after this. We're back here. Yeah, on the NFC East mixtape. Um, definitely after some ads that you just heard, and not after a weird pause on the YouTube video versions. <laughs> Uh, leave us a like, by the way. I, I've heard I've heard that's important, RJ, to the algorithm and whatnot. Because you know, a lot of people comment and subscribe, and we appreciate all that good stuff. But actually, the easiest thing to do, even easier of all of those, is just click the like button. Doesn't like there's it's such a low commitment. Agreed. So uh, click the like button if you're watching I, this. We appreciate I hate it. to make I hate to kind of go out of order, but uh, we didn't do the Eagles uh, win total, and it's ten and a half. So oh, quickly, yeah. I um I'll do the I'm, over on that. I'm going to lean over, too. But I just like Dallas, I don't feel super great. Um, but I'm going to lean over. It's because, you know, no team repeats. And I just feel like the Eagles have a good chance. I'm actually, I'm, I think, I feel good about their chances of being better than they were last year. Or, like, rebounding a bit. But I think I feel not as good as their ceiling. I feel better about their, that's, I think, a better way to frame it. More concise way to frame it. I feel confident in their floor. But not so good about that's a good way to put it. I agree with that. Okay. Um, to the New York Giants, their biggest non quarterback need is what, in your opinion? Um, quarterback is their biggest need by far. No, we don't have to um, state the obvious here. We've done that a million yeah, times. Yeah, uh, right. Off, I think offensive line still, they need to fix. I mean, that's not, it's not like necessarily fixed. I know they've like tried to throw things at that. And, you know, they obviously made some free signings to try to get better in that regard. Um, uh it's that and i mean really the other thing that has been coming to mind is volume target it's not even necessarily receiver could be a tight end the darren what the darren waller trade was supposed to be is really what the giants need jaron waller who we still don't know if he's gonna retire or not they need a volume target in that offense they do not have that i like jalen hyatt a lot i think he's gonna be a good player friend of volume target jalen hyatt what's that friend of mine jalen hyatt we got to get him on the mixtape. He, he, I thought he was a really good interview when you interviewed him uh, during Super Bowl week. I would like to get him on here. I thought he had some, like, honest and uh, but he, fair. He was super – that's a great way to put it. Like, super um, authentic. You know what yeah. I mean? Like, like exactly. not – you know, some guys can be kind of fake about it. Even But Kayvon Thibodeau, I know people accuse him of being fake. He was super authentic and super real. I know you're not a fan, whatever. Um, but I was going to go safety. I know that's kind of weird, but I, I hear your your position on this, obviously. Because their starting safety right now is, or start, starting guard right now, left guard on our lads, Aaron Stinney. That was a backup in the Bucks last year. Like, come I on. I mean, again, I'm not offering the idea that they're, you know, good, um, you know, at guard, but I'm saying they lost Xavier McKinney, who was one of their best players last year. Is that insane not... that they didn't re sign him? Why? I know. I mean, I don't know. Um, so Jalen Mills is there now. Shout out um, to the was it Green here? The What's Green Goblin. Name? Yeah, his um, Twitter is at Green Goblin. So their starting safeties are Jalen again according to our lads, Jalen Mills and Jason Pinnock. Pinnock's but, like a decent player, probably kind of. Uh, spoiler alert: He might be like you know un- most underrated player on the Giants. Mm, like he's he's been he's been solid. Mm, maybe Kayvon Thibodeau's the most underrated player. He's not underrated. No one's underrating him. 
You are. Anyway, um, so say, maybe maybe safety isn't the number one outside of quarterback, but it's up there for me. You know what I mean? Like I, I think if if you if you had asked me the things I fear on the Giants before this offseason began, you know, their safety play was one of them because of Xavier McKinney. And now that's not there. And so I don't mean to say like, oh, Xavier McKinney's gone. Like, let's go get the mystery box that can be the boat, you know, to your point. Mm. But it is still a void that they have to fill. And I don't think, you know, that they've done that properly. So safety, I think offensive line, like you could play offensive line for anybody in the NFL, obviously. I mean, you know, I know we did that with Dallas and Philadelphia. So I'm not saying that they're exempt in that regard, but Mm -hmm. um, wide receiver. Are we willing to go that far? Like, is it is yeah, it like a, a I, well, big a volume target? I know, but like to isolate the position specifically, because if we talk about just wide receivers, because it's possible that Darren Waller could be serviceable for them. It's possible Possibly might not play for them. <laughs> no, I know. I mean, but again, I mean, leaning optimistic here. But from a wide receiver standpoint, the starting receivers are the aforementioned Hyatt, Darius Slayton, who is great, and Wandell Robinson, who obviously a lot of people like in different capacities. But there's no Darius like. Slayton's not great. He's fine. I think he can be great, though. Like, he's had some great moments. I mean, again, relative to what they've had going on there for a very long time. So they need, like, that alpha. You know, they need what Kenny Galladay was supposed to be. That's why I said a volume target, yeah. But but you're – you that was a wide blanket. I'm talking – they need that tried and true wide receiver specifically. And this is a, a draft that's very deep at the position, obviously. It could be. And, yes, but that's the kind of receiver, too. It can't just be, like, another, like, big play kind of guy. Like, Jay Leon Hyatt is, you know, in theory, supposed to be. They need someone who can dominate targets. And, sure, a wide receiver will be great. Although, if Waller isn't back, I mean, their depth chart at tight end after that is Daniel Bellinger, who I actually liked. But well, everybody think, likes. That's why they were kind of bummed about the the Waller trick. Because everybody's like, "Oh man, now Bellinger's not going to get to play anymore." But I don't know if he's like. I think he might be more of a tight end too, to be honest. And then behind that, you know, it's Chris Manhurts, Jack Stoll, formerly from the Eagles, Tyree Jackson, formerly from the Eagles. You know, it's just there's not a lot there behind them. Is there those guys, especially Manhurts and Stoll? I think are more like blocking kind of tight ends. They're kind of tight end two, tight end three guys. So um, it's almost like a tight end room of the slot receivers that the giants had last year just a billion different slot receivers who were all mediocre so uh yeah i like wanda robinson i think he's a decent player in the slot there slayton's like if he's your number if you're if he's your second best receiver it's like probably okay it's probably fine um but it feels like they need a little bit more help there well, thankfully, they in all likelihood won't have a premium asset to devote to any of these positions because they well i don't know i i i, I guess every day i feel like it's less and less likely that they're going to walk away with one of these quarterbacks in the first round. Really? Well, I mean, I, I just don't know that they have the ammunition, right? Like we obviously Chicago, Washington are going quarterback. I know new England is kind of a pivot point and Arizona is not taking a quarterback, but we, we all kind of presume that Minnesota is going to get up there somehow, some way and take theirs. Hmm. So Minnesota, Minnesota will be the third team. And we just, Could be. It, it comes down to whether or not new England wants to take a quarterback and whoever you find that, or believe that to be, whether it's Jaden Daniels or Jaden McCarthy, or if you think Drake may is the one who falls. Um, I just don't know that the giants are, I think they're, they're like the bridesmaid here relative to the core four of quarterbacks in the class. There was a article on big blue view.com about how uh, I think uh, I don't. I forget how they worked this, but somehow, Ed, our good friend Ed Valentine worked it where they pulled like Viking fans. I think I maybe took from the Vikings um, uh, SB Nation reacts to where Viking fans would rather have the or sorry no, um, who is it? Who's the trade up candidate? Uh, is it four? No, five. The, car- six? the Cardinals are at four, so they they're the spot if New England goes quarterback at three that everyone thinks Minnesota will go to 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 go get. I'm forgetting which McCarthy team. Or- they specifically set up, but they basically a long-winded way at me here of saying that they they preferred the Vikings package to what the Giants would offer. So, um, you know, you're, fan sentiment. The, Cardinals fans, fans, the Cardinals Cardinal, fans well, want trade well, with the, Vikings, not Giants. Because the Cardinal, I'm sorry, the Vikings now have two first round picks that, and the Giants don't. Right. Even though the Giants are, are higher, right? That's that's you know what Minnesota can offer. So, um, you know, it comes would you do that to, if you're the Cardinals? Just out of curiosity. Would you go would down I, to 11 and 23? Yeah, and I think then you still go back up if you really want Marvin Harrison Jr., although you might lose him to the Chargers. You know what I mean? So, yeah, I think you just live with what receiver you could get at that point. Yeah. But, yeah, anyway. Um, okay, uh, six and a half, the win total for the Giants. I'm going to go over because I think um, – maybe I'll re- instantly regret that. Uh, I think that – I was trying to, like, build the case for optimism in my head. I think if you – 
get a rookie quarterback who can make, make a leap and then offensive line will be more stable than it's been in a bit um man i really thought it in my head uh it sounded better actually i'm gonna go um, that's tough what do you think i'm gonna go over because they won six games last year yeah, and and low. had some had some things i, I would say they regress to the other side of the spectrum kind of really bad so, injury like, luck in terms of right. down to their third string quarterback. So they went from one end in 2022 where everything really worked down. They were nine, seven and one to the other end. And even mm. with a lot of things working against them and a quarterback who was, or a set of quarterbacks who couldn't exactly be like, spare me the, you know, Tommy DeVito stuff. I mean, they still won six games. So mm. I'm, I mean, if Dallas regresses and a lot of people think that they will, myself included, I recognize I took the over here and I can't just take the over on everybody, but I might, but if Dallas does regress, those wins have, or those games have to go somewhere. You know what I'm saying? Like um, mm-hmm. the, the water will find a way and it might find a way to six and a yeah. half is really low for an NFL team. I you mean, say over. like it's, it's hard to win fewer than six games in the NFL. In fact, uh, so fewer than six, there were only two, three, five teams in the NFL that won fewer than six games and and you know the chargers lost justin herbert you know you can kind of explain that away in that sense the mm. panthers were the panthers um and the patriots were the i mean so you either had a massive injury or you're like really 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 bad in a way that the giants aren't bad so that's why i'm willing to lean over here uh it's kind of funny though because it's like who's their quarterback i don't, I don't know maybe daniel jones <laughs> Well, I I do think that Brian Dable proved he can coach a little bit. You know, I, mm. I, I know we were a little on the fence after that first season, but I'm not saying I really believe in Brian Dable, but I definitely believe in him to a certain degree. So I'll take the over. Okay. Um, I think they want- get a big draft. I think, sorry, that's my case for optimism because um, I do think that uh, like they can, the receiver class is good. They get that. If they obviously, if they nail the quarterback pick, a gigantic if, but if they do that, I think they could have here's my take on the Giants. I think they could have success faster than people think because I think they could be in a spot where they get the quarterback and they get that receiver and they kind of have like a cute Houston Texans thing going on. The biggest non quarterback need for the commanders, because again, that's really obvious, is what? Hmm. I can go first here. So okay. um I'm gonna go Ed Rusher. I mean, just because yeah, they, they got rid of they got rid of theirs and and um, and they did so, obviously, understanding the quote-unquote consequences. Um, mm-hmm. The Montez Sweat thing has really worked out for the Bears. And I think you owe Chicago a bit of an apology, mm-hmm. but whatever. Um, the Chase Young thing. I, I don't think, think I worked. ripped that trade. I think you did. You And you ripped the contract. And again, Chicago had mm-hmm. the room. Like I don't have a problem with teams that are in the position that Chicago is in. And even Washington now, I don't have a problem with them overpaying dudes Taking because the rookie contract. Exactly. Like like overpay all you want because you have the ability to do so. So and good for Montez Sweat that he was the beneficiary of that. So the commanders got out while they could. They got obviously some compensation for him. They weren't going to give him that contract, even though they were going to be in the same exact position from a, court, a rookie quarterback contract standpoint. Also, um, as Brandon checks on the Phillies. Um, uh, the Sixers, actually. It's at the end of the game here. Uh, by the way, the Spurs are up three on the Nuggets without Devin Vassell, Keldon Johnson, and Jeremy Sohan. So, yeah, shout out to Wendy. But anyway, okay. um, I think a lot of people care. He's incredibly popular all around the world. So I think more people probably care than about Joel, who got owned by speaking of the Nuggets. Jokic. Jokic was the real How MVP. many points did Joel drop on Wendy again? Was it 70? Okay. Anyway. Uh, I think it was 71 to be literal and accurate. Anyway, um. The Chase Young trade worked out for the commanders, I think. Like, they look really smart on that. So, edge rusher. But, I mean, again, quarterback kind of still is the show. But assuming they land that pick, you know, which is not easy to do, but not really hard when you're second overall, if they walk away with a couple of edge rushers here, and they don't have to be premium, premium, premium picks, but they do have to obviously start restocking the cover a little bit there. Sixers won. Big win over the Thunder. Uh, yeah, I think that's an obvious one. We look at their depth chart. Uh, just like a lot of guys there right now, right? Well, and they, at, they at did Rusher. sign Dorrance Armstrong in free agency. Yeah, All like him, him right. Fowler, uh, Cleveland Farrell, you know, obviously with the San Francisco connection there uh, and their new GM. So kind of just like guys. That's kind of the, the commander's roster as a whole to me. Just like a lot of people, not necessarily stars. And I think that's honestly like my biggest need for them is uh you know besides quarterback is like more star power who do they have that's super dominant at their position that you feel like is one of the best players in the league at their position obviously you would probably argue you know one would argue 
that uh, Terry McLaurin is the closest thing to that, I would say. Uh, if you really like John Allen or Jerome Payne, sure. They're in the conversation. There. And I think they're yeah. they're, in the, they're starting the conversation for best interior duo in the NFL. They are. But what are their ages, by the way? John Allen turns 30 this year. So, or turn, no, he turned 29 in January. So he's 29. And then uh, Jerome Payne, I'm sure, has been around for a little bit too. It's like he 25, be, 26. This will be his age 27 season. So, yeah, I mean, they're fine. Not like you're seeking to replace them. But uh, when you look at this roster, I think they just need more star power in general and you know we they're going to draft a quarterback although in the bleeding green nation community mock draft someone went rogue kind of and had them just take marvin harrison because they don't they don't like any other quarterbacks so uh there's a scenario where i mean i think i've seen that sentiment or sentiment (laughs) that's when you cement a sentiment i would Uh, buy that I would buy that more if they'd been the team to sign Russell Wilson, Some, something like that. You know what I mean? Like if that precursor. Yeah, I don't think there. it's going to happen as we right. talked about too, even just from like a aesthetic standpoint, like this is the time to market a new quarterback. This is not the time to this team that's had this like this long suffering fan base. It's not the right time to be like, you know, what we're going to do actually, we're going to kick the can down the road even further. I don't think the fan base is going to stand for that. I think you have a chance. Number two, to get a quarterback you don't know if you're going to be in this position again and it makes all the sense in the world to get the guy that you think you really believe in and uh what they do outside of that i think it's more of just getting a star regardless of position how appropriate by the way that the sixers won when we started talking about this team josh harris is just happy in a bunch of different ways right now so good for him good for you um okay yes. star power is the thing uh six and a half is the win total for the commanders uh hmm. i'll so this is file this under, under. Like, I was well, I'm gonna kind of ride the fence a little bit. One of New York That's or not Washington. how over under works. No, no, no. I was gonna say one of you New York take or Washington the push. You could they could no. win six games and have a tie. One of New York or Washington will firmly hit their over. You know what I'm saying? Like one one of these teams is gonna arrive a bit, you know, by, and, and by say a number, by like you know, by three by three or more. Okay. By three, yeah. One of the one of these two teams will. I wow, feel confident that's a good take. in that. And some some of that de- Oh, a lot of it depends on the quarterback that Washington takes, presuming that does happen and whether or not New York's able to be that team that convinces Arizona to trade with them or whatever. I mean, so I feel especially if Dallas does suffer the regression that a lot of people expect. Now, if that doesn't happen again, like a million different things can happen, but I feel confident that because it's, it's possible that the Eagles regress a bit too, right? Like, I mean, you talk about the Nick Sirianni of it all, the Mike McCarthy of it all, right? Like it's, it like if, if I came back from the future to go back to time jumping around here and I was like, BLG dude, Neither Dallas nor Philly won the NFC East in 2024. Mm. You you would not be shocked. You would be like, well, that's a little surprising, but like that I could totally close my eyes and see that happening. I'd be pretty surprised. Which it's, team do you think it would be? I'm more inclined to believe that it's Washington. Mm. I, I mean, honestly, because they've they've been more aggressive and they've brought in more talent and they have more offensive talent right now. They and, raise the floor there. Right. And if and, and they've made life or they're going to make life seemingly easy for their rookie quarterback. Um, I don't really trust Cliff Kingsbury a lot, but high mm. high ceiling, not really you know, super low floor, but also super high ceiling. You know what I mean? Mm. Like if it hits, it hits. And I was ready for the Cowboys to move on from Dan Quinn. And so if he has success, it will look like egg on my face, even though I feel like my points were very valid. But I do put stock into him as the leader of men and culture builder. Etc. I know Ron Rivera had those qualities, but Dan Quinn has had them in much larger spades as of late. So, like, I could see, you know, the attitude, the environment, all that kind of working in their favor. And if there is regression within the division, it will offer them the opportunity to really benefit from it. Plus, we talk about first place schedules all the time. They get a last place schedule. And the benefits of that, they get to play Chicago. They get to play, mm. um, well, obviously, they play Carolina because the division plays the NFC West. They get to play Arizona. They get to play uh the titans that's the afc south draw they have like that could be the difference for them you know th- that could be the three games that we're talking about here pushing them over by by the, the metric you threw out i think the danger is the f- the floor could be really low from a standpoint of like rookie quarterback floor is pretty low you know what i mean like the worst case scenario of the rookie quarterback is you could be like really re- like we just saw the panthers basically last year i know that's more of an extreme side but the point is like if the guy just can't play and you really mess it up like and you know, like Marcus Mariota is not saving your season. Like, just, there's not a lot there. Whereas Daniel Jones is obviously not great, 
but he's been on some teams, Giants teams before that have been like, you know, bad, but not like number one pick kind of bad. Like they win six games or whatever. So right uh, right now, who are you more afraid of from an Eagles standpoint, Daniel Jones or Jane Daniels? Because that's who you think Washington's taking. Who are you more afraid of? Yeah, I'm, I'm going to go with the upside, Jane right. Daniels, for sure. And that's, but I also that's think the thing, the, like, his floor is lower. Oh, name the player on the Giants that presents upside. It's Brian Burns, right? Like and on the maybe whole roster? Yeah, like and maybe there's a domino effect there, right? Like maybe they just developed this insane like pass rush because of, of that trade. Maybe it's a Hassan Reddick sort of effect, you know, the way the Eagles had. But we can name a lot of players on Washington that could provide that in different elements. And so especially at the most important one, the quarterback position. So I'll take Washington. Surprised didn't say Kayvon Thibodeau, your boy. Anyway. Uh, we need to get somebody on to talk Washington. Yeah. Well, um, Maybe. Need to get both guests on. Honestly, we should do that for the draft. We should really we'll do because that's, that's the first time we kind of did that, or at least with Ed, we had Ed on the first, that was um, like the second mix, second or third mixtape episode ever. Let's uh, start planning on that, and um, let's get some songs and get out of here. Um, wow. So, Rachelle submitted her song first. She is going mm-hmm. with a newbie, "Most Wanted" by Beyonce and Miley Cyrus. An excellent choice by Rachelle. I was a little surprised that Rachel didn't go with the Cowboy Carter song. I haven't been able to listen yet, but um, she will at some point. I'm very yeah. confident. Um, so I did something I've never done before, and I don't. I guess you didn't see this. I actually picked my song so far ahead of time hmm. that I added it because I control the, the playlist. I added it to the playlist on Monday. That's that's, that's when I knew it. Do that. That's not how it works. That's why not? not? Canon. Uh, Can't just well, be doing this. I did it because I knew I was going to pick it. I was in That's complete terrible. control of it. Um, You're spoiling the episode. No, but people, no, 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 no. Why are people going to even listen to the episode at all now? Hear me out because I wanted to do it on April Fool's Day because I went with the song wow. Love Fool by the Cardigans. Yeah, I, again, it wouldn't have felt cool to do it. You know, even my story about the real world didn't wow, hit you really the same pranked way. the listeners. With that exactly. I pranked you. So Love Fool by the Cardigans is my choice. Uh, I don't think I know that song. I'm going to go love with. Love me, love me. Well, don't, don't get DC DMCA'd. Uh, you know, I'm gonna go with "After Hours" by We Are Scientists. I think a big, like, like late aughts kind of song and band. And actually, wow. they have some other good songs too. So check them out. We Are Scientists. The song is "After Hours." Officially on the playlist, as is Rachel's Rachel. song. I'm, wor- I'm working on it right now. You did uh, nail the episode number, by the way. It is 158. So, well, I made the graphic, so I mean, it was somewhere in the back of you know the recesses on my mind. So, you know, I kind of kind of funny you don't put the mixtape episode in the top left of the screen here, where it says mixtape four two. You can uh, sometimes I sometimes I do, but when I was doing that, I couldn't remember in that moment. But then it was a little bit till you got here, so mm-hmm. I had some time to think. Uh, as Just we leave, time to look it up. as we leave, Brandon, I would like you to tell us if you could only hang out. With one of hmm. Bryce Harper, Joel Embiid, and Embiid. Devon and Devonte Smith, and the activity that you were going to be doing was your twenty taco challenge. But the challenge specifically with eating it in twenty minutes yeah, or less. The, no, the five minutes. Five minutes. Or, I'm sorry, sorry, mm. five minute challenge. Who would you do it with, and why? That's tough, by the way. Like, just I was trying to do the math on that because I'm not good at math. It's like one every fifteen seconds. Like, that's that's not a lot of time to eat a taco. Mm-hmm. They're they're small tacos, obviously. Yeah, like, well, still, two biters, right? Yeah. yeah. But still, like, I don't know. I like to just chew my food more too. I'm not. I, I want to chew it well. I'm not just trying to like chomp and and swallow them instantly. Um, but uh, Joel Embiid, have you seen his Hot Ones episode before? No, I didn't know he had a Hot Ones episode. He's, yeah, you should you should watch that. I think it's I think and regardless if you like the Sixers or not, I think people would like it. Um, he's an interesting guy, and he also spoiler alert just crushes those wings. I know that's not the same kind of thing at spice versus volume, but he's bigger. He's seven two. He's huge. I'm sure he could eat twenty. I could recently eat him fast probably. I recently watched the John Oliver Hot Ones episode, and it might be my favorite one of all time. I don't know, I don't if, know you've if I've seen, seen it. it. It's somewhat new um i want to say it's like within the last few months okay. or a few weeks um so it was really 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 funny I why mean, was it oh just because it was funny yeah like he was really funny and he um i mean like if you watch a lot of these things like oh no this is super hot and it's burning my mouth like that isn't funny anymore you know what i mean um so but he he, he he's also insanely clever and so you know he's he's much more capable than I think your average participant of describing what's happening in an eclectic and, and mm. creative way. And he did that. So cool. yeah. watch it maybe right after we get done with this. I have all the sauces from last season in my fridge. So 
Maybe I can say the just... word fridge and then we leave. Fridge and then we leave. <laughs>